Welcome back, guys, to the 2011 Mini Cooper restoration. What I've done is I've removed the valve cover. It was actually quite easy, and uh, all the surrounding little things. And um, to my disappointment, I did not find anything obvious. I was really hoping the timing chain would be sagging, a uh, guide broken. But from what I can see down down in here, of course, I can't see everything. But what I can see, the chain is perfectly tensioned, no slack in it at all. And, and to be quite honest, I've never worked on an engine like this. I've never seen a setup like this. I'm going to have to do some research to find out what these springs actually do. I think it has something to do with adjusting the valves and how far they open and close. And, and I say that because because of the uh, mechanisms down here. I don't, I don't know if it'll focus well enough for you to see, but um, let me see. No, it really doesn't. It really doesn't. But, um, but here, here's the cam, okay, of course. And these springs here are on another, another shaft. And I would imagine this adjusts the distance that the uh, valves open and close because it works this little lever here that rides on the cam lobes, those little rollers there. And that transmits into the angled areas right there. So I would imagine this is something that adjusts timing or valve clearances or something I'm I'm not quite sure and that's something that I'm really curious to find out a lot of the the camshaft uh, variable things on, on these new engines will run off of oil pressure and if you if you don't have oil pressure your timing is going to be all screwed up and that's that's the key I believe here is that something has burnt out clogged up or just failed completely due to it overheating and now this cam here is rattling making noise because the clearances are too too wide and it's causing the rattle that's that's where I'm thinking but anyway I'm rambling on right now uh, back to what I need to I I removed all, all of the spark plugs and the spark plugs look like they're filled with carbon and um, no oil, no water signs, just just a lot of soot from all the um, the carbon due to the way that, that the engine's running right now. And something that my son and I noticed the day that we brought it in is that the tailpipe here, the tailpipe is full of carbon deposits, which some is normal, but it's it's unusually thick. I actually rubbed my finger there and cleaned it off and just pulling it into the driveway it looks like it covered it up again okay so I'm going to continue on I'm going to pause the video I'm going to hook something up to the crankshaft so I can turn the engine so I can really check the clearances of these areas here because I think that is going to be the key we'll be back with you in just a few Okay, I am now back. Um, I have found something pretty interesting. After rotating the engine by hand, I was able to come back up here and I was able to start playing with some of these rocker arms that were, that were um, compressed when I first pulled the valve cover off. And this one in particular caught my eye. This here is actually able to come off of the valve. Imagine if that would have happened while it was running. Oh man, I'd be in so much trouble. But anyway, this is what I was thinking I was hearing. I was hearing something to do with this, this valve here being stuck. Um, or one of the, the valve flash adjusters down here, which is commonly called a 
lifter in the older engines, I was thinking something along these lines. And this is the only one. And and the noise I heard uh, while I was running, I wish I would have ran it so that you guys could hear it. But uh, but you could trust me in in telling you that uh, there was very little sound in in this engine here. Uh, it was just a little rattle, and it was almost drivable. It was almost like a, a normal sound, but, uh, of course, the guy who would have known what is normal or not. Or, unfortunately, I've got to pull the head off. This is going to be a pretty time-consuming ordeal. This is, uh, this is not an easy car or to work on. Not an easy head to pull off. I would imagine I'm going to have to pull off the light assemblies. This whole area here so that I can easily get to the exhaust and then I got to pull off all of this here all the hoses and everything to get to the intake which is kind of odd that the intake is on the back side um, that's something unique to this so with the engine having this stuck valve open I'm I'm wanting to say it's it's a bent valve um, but with that one stuck open like that, um, I believe that uh, the rest of it's trying to compensate, and that's why it's just fouling out. It's fouling out the spark plug. It's fouling out the cylinders because I can see down in the spark plug holes, I can see uh, that the tops of the pistons, you can see that one right there. That is fouled out. That one's fouled out. That one's fouled out. And that one's fouled out. And it's just making it run really dirty. So um, the next few uh, few days, I'm going to work on taking the engine apart, getting the head off. And then once we get the head off, then we're going to go ahead and uh, find out exactly what's wrong and what the extent is. My, my hopes is that that valve is sticking, it's stuck open or bent, and I can remove it, replace it, and put new seals and everything on the head and while i'm there i might as well go ahead and have it resurfaced and check for any cracks due to it overheating so um that's something that i'm totally willing to do so anyway um that does it for the diagnosis if there's anything further i'll go ahead and add it i'm going to do a little more inspection on it before i start the tear down got the next few days off work so hopefully I can get it torn down by then get that content out to you so you can stay updated and tuned in okay guys here we are I've removed the headlight assembly all of the tubes and everything that that were here I've exposed the intake manifold and that wet stuff there is actually fuel because this injector popped out of the fuel rail right here so i've got that back on there but um this is the intake i gotta pull it off there's a there's a water port that i have to pull off and then there's the exhaust manifold that i have to pull off as well as some motor mounts up front and then i should be able to unbolt this thing and remove it and of course i gotta pull off these crazy ass things here but uh, that's all all to come all right guys and um, this is the update and um, we are going to continue on continue further I haven't seen any cracked pipes or crack lines but look at that water port there man there's like four possibly five hoses attached to it is that insane or what but I do see a little bit of something here that looks like it's leaking but we'll We'll definitely check that out. But anyway, okay. We're going to continue on. I've got to go by the store to pick up some deep well sockets. I, for some reason, I do not have an 11. And for some reason, these exhaust bolts here, or nuts, I should say, these are actually 11s. 10 don't fit, 12 don't fit, so that only leaves one thing. And I don't think they would use standard equipment standard bolts to work on this engine but you never know I might uh, try one before I go 
Okay, that's it. See you in the next clip. Hello there. I just wanted to give you guys an update on the process of removing this head on my Mini. Um, I had to remove, of course, the, uh, the intake manifold. Instead of undoing everything, taking a chance of breaking things, I actually removed the, the studs that went into each hole so that, that I don't have to move this back m much at all. Just enough, as you can see, it's just back far enough for me to remove this head. And I did something similar to the exhaust manifold because it's also back just enough, just enough, I don't know if you could see that space in there, just enough for me to slide the head straight up. And um, all of this water port here, this water port here is, is all loosened up. It dumped out quite a bit of water when it was all done. But, um, and, and the other things I had to do is I had to tear apart the whole front of this engine here. And this is, this was very, very easy difficult right there is the water pump i'm considering going ahead and replacing it since it's so incredibly hard to get to i figured i would go ahead and replace the water pump so that that is changed and not a problem because when you have an engine overheat you really don't know why it overheated so you want to eliminate all the causes and as you can probably see down there uh, along Right about in there, you can see how there's there's oil mark, and I would imagine that that is coming from right up here, right up here, let me back out a little bit, where the valve cover goes down in and seals there. I'm sure that is where that oil was coming from. And so it had a front engine oil leak. That's a better shot right there. And um, I'm glad that I can get in there and fix that issue. But anyway, to continue on, I had to remove the belt. There's a tensioner there. And if you've ever seen this area of the, the uh, Mini, sorry for all the shaking around, there's another device that goes here that goes in the middle of both the crankshaft and the water pump pulley. And it transfers, there's no belt that goes around the water pump pulley. That pulley in the middle there transfers the rotation from this to the water pump. So that was a really interesting thing that I've never seen on a car before. But anyway, in order to continue, I'm actually done for the day. I have to pull off the tire and pull off this entire area here and back it up so that I can get to that pulley. Because what I have to do is I have to remove the pulley, remove, remove a piece inside the pulley so that I can pull the chain and the guides out as an assembly. That's gonna be a pretty neat little thing uh, to do. So I have to pull all that out at one time uh, because this, this side here kind of kind of curves over and around right here and it creates a, an a impossible situation for me to pull the head straight up and plus if you notice there's some wear and tear right there like stress marks on that guide and I want to go ahead and replace them so that I can get that possibility out of the way as well. Uh, well that about sums up where I'm at on this. And as you can see, I got all my wires held back, pulled back, and out of the way. Um, other than those guides there, this head is ready to unbolt and slide right out. Uh, of course, we can't do that until everything is safe and out of the way. Uh, well, that's it for this segment. This is not a how-to video. This is just a document of what had to be done in order to get this Mini back on the road. So, until the next segment, see you in a flash. Okay, everybody. I got the head off. It was a chore. I had to tear out the whole front end here. And that was very tight, confined areas. And what I found out is that little screw right there has
has to come out and this intake will move further out of the way. Um, I'll do that before I put it back together. But anyway, I found that the whole problem, problem with the engine was this tube that goes down inside here and goes into the water pump, the back of the water pump. You see, see this area here? Let's see if I can get it to focus. This area is supposed to have a flange on it. You can see part of it that's left right there. And on that flange is a rubber seal. Now, I don't know where the rubber seal is, but I, I did dig out some of that flange out of the, the water ports around the cylinders here. And um, that could have contributed to the, the overheating because it probably plugged up uh, the water ports and caused it to heat up. But uh, anyway, I believe the majority of it is because it all leaked out through that broken flange. And you can see that this hose here, this one here, that's a, a breathe a vent hose. It has been leaking oil. Uh, when I was pulling it off, it looked loose, and then I, cr I heard a crack. So I think this hose has been cracked and leaking for quite some time right down that area because that is oil. It's just blowback oil. But anyway, um, the water pump, the back of the water pump is right down there, and I think that is what what the problem is here. It was uh, it cracked, whatever happened. But anyway, while I was I was investigating the area, I started pulling out chunks of that plastic out of all around here. And I don't know if you can see, but the grooves are pretty clean right now. But when I first started, they were full of what looked like block seal, you know, trying to stop a leak. That is what, that is what it looked like to me. Uh, that stuff is useless. I would never use that. So fix the problem and then uh, you won't have any problems. There's a little bit of chunk right there left that I will have to get out. I don't want to leave. Alright guys, that piece that I saw in there, just answer my own question. What happened to that rubber seal? Well, it was blown in right here from the water pump because water pump's right here. This is the port that I would imagine blows water through the engine. And it was blown and laying right here. So that rubber piece was floating around in there. And I would imagine that could cause havoc if it wasn't for the fact that it ran out of water. But anyway, that that is definitely good to get out of there. And uh, and it looks to me like the rest of the the rest of the uh, flange piece I've already got out. I got out quite a few chunks. And back in here was really really dirty had a lot of uh, pile up of that what I would call block seal that's what it resembled to me but uh, it looks like everything else is cleaned out a little bit of corrosion here but when I get this engine back together I'm gonna start it up with just water and then I will will run it heat it up flush it out hopefully we can get the remainder of that crap out of there and also this this port right here was completely gunked up with a grease like substance maybe block seal and um i don't know exactly what these ports are i have not investigated them um so i couldn't tell you but anyway those are just a few things i found while i was dismantling this this head here and um, we're waiting on parts right now, parts and tools, to finish getting out the chain. Uh, I have to find a way to hold the crank still, either buy a, a wrench for it or use the uh, tools I'm getting to set the timing. Uh, I saw a guy online that uh, used the crankshaft holding tools to hold the crank still while he torqued it down and everything, so that's something I might, I might do. But anyway, I'm going to show you. Okay, here's the head. And at first glance, the head looks pretty good. Let me move that head gasket out of the way. First glance, the head looks really good. Uh, there's some open cylinders there because of the, uh, the cams are still in it. 
And we continue going on down the line here. And then we come across the one that had the issue. And I don't know if this will transmit. Oh, yeah, here it is. That thing there is the actual valve seat that had somehow come out. Probably when this thing heated up, the head expanded and blew that, that valve seat out. It's supposed to be flush like these here. But this one is raised. And um, quite honestly, that's a scary sight. But uh, I don't see any any cracks right offhand. I uh, probably have to wait till it gets clean to really see any cracks. But I don't see any. My experience with heads, you can usually see the cracks. And again, this uh, this wetness here, I don't believe that's that's. Uh, anything other than when I was pulling the head off. But then again, we never know. This head was definitely blown, the gasket. So anyway, um, that's about it. Uh, this is the complete dismantling of my Mini Cooper. Uh, I've definitely found the issue. The issue was a blown head gasket, clogged water ports, and a dislodged valve seat and that's on the exhaust side so imagine imagine this thing trying to to fire it's going to seep out of the the, the holes that are in this valve Just like that. okay all right guys i'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video this concludes part two of my restoration of my blown out Mini Cooper. Stay tuned for part three. I'm gonna start dismantling and rebuilding this head. I'm gonna have to go have some extensive machine work done on it, check it for cracks, resurface it, reseat that valve seat there, have everything else checked out. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe or you're gonna miss the rest of this video series. Thank you. Thanks for watching Cobra Vids.